after being seven years in politics, I was uh, elected as the president of, of the party. It is funny how, how strong the image of this digital Estonia is, or the digital country that we have. Due to the social media, we all are personal brands as well. We built them either consciously or unconsciously, how we appear, how other people see us, and, and it is important. Hi everyone, today I'm honored to be with Madam Kaya Kalas from Estonia. She is the uh, president of the Reforms Party of Estonia, which is more pro-technology, more pro-globalization, I guess. And uh, uh, you didn't start this party, did you? No, uh, my father started this party. Oh, <laughs> yes. it's a family thing. Yeah, well, uh, it sort of worked out that way. I was uh, I was attorney at law. Uh, oh. I was a partner in the biggest law firm, and I said I will never go into politics. <laughs> never um, say never. But uh, never say never, and I guess you know the genes are calling anyhow. So after um, working 14 years as an attorney at law, I, I went to politics. Why? So. Well, because there were so many issues that I saw that uh, where I could actually, you know, make a difference. When you know you are a lawyer, you help somebody, uh, but the rules are made by somebody else. So, so I was constantly criticizing the rules, how how they could be better, and so so they approached me saying that, and that was not my father. My father actually said that no, no, no. <laughs> But, uh, but uh, from the party that uh, come to politics because we need people like you and so I went and after after being seven years in politics I was uh, elected as the president of, of the party. Was he the prime minister before? Uh, he was, yes, in 2002 to 2004. Yeah. How was it to be a daughter of the prime minister? <laughs> well, uh, no difference really. I mean, it's a small country, so everybody knows everybody. Everybody is related to somebody famous, so actually, no big difference there. So what that what, what I understand is because like we come from a country, 220 million people, um, you, it's impossible to make may meet the governors or the uh, authoritative people, and normal people don't want to even get to that. Uh, level, um, they don't want to climb up the stairs of changing anything uh, because they have never met a person mm. who who is in power, so they don't feel good enough yeah, yeah. to get there. So in your country, it was very interesting when I came first time. I just met the mayor, had you know lunch with him. I was like, mm. really? Mm. Is that easy? So it's very really beautiful and it's a very really lovely place. Mm. I would recommend everyone to definitely at least go once uh, to Estonia and have some mushroom soup. Yeah, yeah. Um, why did he start the party? What, 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 what did he want you to reform? Um, it's a liberal party, so so he actually had all the ideas regarding the economy, how we boost, how we make uh, so uh, how we make it better for the entrepreneurs. So first, it was called the Entrepreneurs Party. Thank you. So the ideas were all about, you know, uh, how to liberalize, how to privatize, how to do all these things. Uh, and and uh, then it was it was much smaller party. So now we are uh, we are the biggest party. Uh, and and of course we have moved more to the middle maybe um, to address uh, all the people, but. But we are still liberal, so we are still for the rule of law. We are still for the future-looking uh, ideas. So we are more tech-savvy maybe than than the other parties, and we are constantly trying to make our country bigger, <laughs> to bunch above our weight, because it's only 1.3 million people. So it's a small country, and we have to find, you know, our competitive advantages. So people who are not liberal and they're not open to new ideas, you know, they say change is the only constant in the world. What do you think, what's your message to them? Because they're everywhere, not just in yeah. your country, they're everywhere and uh, they're scared basically for, from, the, from being open. 
what what how can what first what's your message to them and how can they open themselves even more the fear uh, very often comes from the unknown so people are afraid of something that they don't know so so if you like and and fear is too strong emotion to say that just you know don't be afraid but uh, but if you look inside their fears uh, how can we overcome these fears i think this is the uh, this is the most important thing and uh, and of course even for a small country like us uh, the question still is how we make it so that nobody is left behind uh, because uh, you know even being a small country um, there are people who feel that you know this world is moving too fast uh, i can't understand technology i'm afraid of it i want to be against it uh, I always tell this joke that um, it's uh, you know a good book, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to Galaxy, where the author says that your attitude towards technology is based, basically um, could be divided into three. Everything that was there before you were born is you know part of nature, should be there, it's natural. Everything that was invented or taken into use uh, before you became 35 is revolutionary, very modern, you know, should definitely be used. And everything that was invented or taken into use after you were 35 goes, to, goes against nature, should be abolished, should not be allowed. Uh, so, so also what we see, uh, the older people are more afraid of the technology and everything that it brings about. Uh, younger people not so much anymore. Uh, and, and so we are focused also um, on, on educating the older people and, and making services, I mean governmental services for them that they can use. I bring you this one example, eHealth and e-prescriptions so um, it has made the life uh, so much better for the older citizens because you know before you had this paper you had to go to the pharmacy to get your medicines but we are a cold country and the roads are very often icy so actually it was quite uh, quite uncomfortable for the older people to go to the pharmacy to get their medicines now we have the e-prescription, so you can call the doctor, the doctor prescribes your medicine that you need and your grandchild can pick it up from the pharmacy and bring it to you uh, or anybody who helps you. So, so actually it has made life easier for the older people as well. And, and I mean, you know, for, for us it has been so that what are the problems and how can we provide solutions? Now, your government provided the e-residency program allowing anyone in the planet to become a resident of Estonia. That's, that's amazing. Um, that must have taken so much courage to, you know, pass the law of doing this. Must have been really difficult. People, I don't, I'm sure they don't realize how difficult it must have been. But how was it received by the citizens? Um, and how did you make it happen? How can other countries take advantage of what you have learned through this long five-year process and actually 25 20, 19-year process in general mm -hmm. and five years with the mm -hmm. e-residence program um, well I will start with the 2000 the digital identities for our citizens so what we did in 2000 uh, you know if we would have asked the people do you want the digital identities they would have gone like huh what are the digital identities why do we need them but uh, we created them and also, uh, you know, on the other side, created the services that they can use the digital identities for, which is filing your taxes. And, and so if, you know, the demand meets, meets um, the offer, then actually it comes together. So, so people took these things up and then we moved on from there. And we saw uh, coming to e-residency, which really is so that you can become an e-resident of, uh, of Estonia while being a real citizen of Pakistan, for example. But uh, I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, but you can, you can use the digital um, services that, that we have. So, so passing this wasn't actually um, too much trouble mm. because people uh, didn't feel that something is taken from them. I mean, in order, 
you know, it's it's the concept of let's make Estonia bigger than we are. Uh, as we compete for talents, uh, as we compete for investments, what can we do when we don't have natural resources? Uh, we don't have a very friendly neighbor. We have a bad climate. So what can we offer to the world uh, to to have our competitive advantage? And that was that was the thing. Uh, people didn't really feel that something is taken from them. Of course, when it was introduced and it moved on, then um, many Estonian citizens asked that what what's in it for us? I mean, uh, the companies don't pay taxes uh, because uh, I mean we don't have a company income tax, um, so like the state doesn't benefit uh, directly. But what uh, the state does benefit from is that. Uh, you know, these e-residents, they establish companies in Estonia, then they employ people, uh, then when they employ people, then they pay social taxes. So actually it is uh, uh, beneficial for our country as well. Mm. E-elections. Uh, why, what can the world learn from Estonia uh, on online voting? Because they're very scared of online voting. They're not scared of online banking anymore, but they're not <laughs> scared of you know voting. But this is uh, this is a very interesting point that you bring. Uh, they're not scared. People are not scared of, of you know uh, trusting their money <laughs> to uh, do do it online and on the internet. They are not scared of uh, of trusting their like data uh, to to online companies, but they are afraid of of you know casting the vote online. Um, we have uh, e-voting, electronic voting, online voting uh, since 2005. So first elections, only 1.9% of people used it. Uh, now in 2019, already 46% of people use this. And if you ask them why, it's convenient, it's where I am. I mean, because people are doing everything online. They are buying online, they are, they are communicating online, they are working online. And so if the c country is not there, if you can't vote online, then it seems like your government your, or your country lives in a totally different world that you are living. So, so therefore, the e-voting is logical. Of course, uh, you have to make the, the system secure and, and uh, um, be worried about the cyber security. But so far, um, it has been uh, quite, uh, quite a good system. So, so no breaches have been, uh, have been seen so far. So, and people, people use it. It hasn't uh, increased the turnout, so so actually, like two to five percent, uh, it increased. But uh, but it means that people who vote still vote, but they just use other means for voting. If you find the lamp of Aladdin, you find the genie. What are the three things you would ask? That's a very difficult question. Um, Probably, I mean, this is very wide, but wisdom to, to uh, you know, accept the things that we can't change and, and also uh, to change the things that you actually can change. Uh, and and for, for my country, I, I would definitely um, wish for uh, understanding that this openness is, is a gift. And the third thing, which is very valuable for us, and uh, is is freedom. Uh, I come from the Soviet Union. I mean, I was born during Soviet Union, and I remember when we didn't have freedom. And uh, and therefore, you know, I under I I can cherish what we have right now. Uh, so and considering our big neighbor, so it is not for granted, and we have to really. Uh, really uh, hold this dear. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Such an honor. Thank You're you. such an eloquent person. I'm really <laughs> honored to meet you. I'm happy that you and brought us together today. And uh, I really hope to see you in Tallinn. And uh, I, my, my sincere request 
uh, is to uh, allow the, the uh, entrepreneurship of our part of the world from Pakistan to come and take advantage of Estonia's openness mm -hmm. and open it for us and uh, with all the security measures you want to take. Mm -hmm. Initially it might be small mm -hmm. but I think um, Estonia, Pakistan has a lot to offer to Estonia and slowly we can uh, you know collaborate and co-work together and I'm, I'm so happy that you guys are open for this. Thank yeah. you so much. Okay. Thank you.